Everybody loves to eat. And the Chinese are the masters at eating. Human beings stopped being hunter-gatherers thousands of years ago when they learned to harness the power of seeds. They were now able to grow, store, and save all those seeds so that they can still have enough food during unsuitable seasons. The trade of surplus food formed the basis of what we call an agrarian economy. The common enemies of the seed plants were pests, frosts, floods, deserts, and other unfavorable conditions, including unsuitable soil. Driven by persistent conflicts, pre-existing and COVID-19-related economic shocks, and also weather extremes, more than 345 million people are now facing a high level of food insecurity, according to the World Food Program analysis, an increase of almost 200 million since early 2020. Over this, and 43 million are just one step away from the famine. The hundreds of millions of hungry people on this planet are tasked with the need to address these problems. You can harness the power of science to produce better yields. A sizable portion of national budget has been allocated to advance science and technology in search of better crops. When people think of corn, Actually, people really think about the sweet corn, waxy corn, and the popcorn. But actually, corn has much more usage than that. The number one usage is animal feed. In China, that percentage is approximately 70%. And the second usage is industrial raw materials, such as industrial beverages, uh, such as sodas, you know, is a raw material for that. Other uses of corn include liquor production, seasonings, pharmaceuticals, and as bioenergy fuel. The color, size, texture, nutrition, yield, and so on, they are all determined by the DNA code of the seed. By identifying and understanding how each DNA code works, scientists today are able to select better and better seeds. In the past, it was all through trials and errors, requiring enormous amount of time, energy, and resources. Every corn breeder is dreaming of a super corn. It has to meet the following three general standards. The first one, it has to produce more greens than the average corn varieties. Second, it has to be resistant to the different diseases and to the different insects or pests. The third one, it performs well in the bad weather, such as a strong wind, dry land, or wet land. In order to develop a better seed, we need to understand its genome. Just like a patient go to see a doctor in a hospital, so a doctor asks him or her to do an MRI or X-ray test, so that the doctor have a good understanding of this patient. With this uh, DNA analysis, we have a better and uh, deeper understanding of a seed. This understanding of good breeds is applicable for every food we eat. Better breeds means better yield, better flavor, and all the good stuff. Plant genome can be very complicated. Wheat, for example, has a very large and complex genome. Its genome size is 16 gigabits which is about five times of human genome size. If we assume one base of nucleotide is one millimeter long, the weight genome would be 160,000 kilometer long. That would make eight times the length of the Great Wall. Now, even if we have the best of the seeds, which can deliver the best of every trait we desire, we still need sufficient and suitable land to grow it on. China's total land mass is similar to that of the US, but about one-fifth of China is covered by glaciers, snow, and deserts. China has given high regards to food security as a top priority for state governance and national stability through rural reform and innovative and agricultural development initiatives, as well as poverty alleviation and rural revitalization programs. This village used to do monocrop cultivation before we arrived. The only crop they planted was radishes. 
Today, they are planting tomatoes, corn, peanuts, and chrysanthemum in addition to radishes. In 2009, China Agricultural University started its first science and technology backyard. Under this program, over a thousand teams are assigned to do field work for 18 months in various villages all around the country. Here we carry out R&D and introduce technological innovation as a ground level. No pun intended. We work hand in hand with farmers, government officials and companies. The end result, rural revitalization. In 2020, the village income was around 110,000 yuan. In three years, it has increased to over 700,000 yuan. As a direct result of the increase in income, these villagers now enjoy tangible benefits from a better quality of life, including new roads, playgrounds, and so on. As household incomes increase, the types and variants of food people choose to eat start to differ. For example, Chinese people start to import exotic variants of rice, such as the Thai omali, Indian basmati rice, and so on. Well, the national strategy for food security and the features of self-sufficiency based on domestic grain production, guaranteeing the food production capacity, and the moderate inputs, and the grain reserve, and uh, technological support. As a result, the decisions of planting single crop versus double crop is based on the taste of the rice, and not about sufficiency as from decades ago. As a science and technology explorer, I hope to use AI to improve the efficiency of China's agriculture. Compared with the traditional manual operation, this GPS-enabled transplanter will cover an area of 6 to 7 hectares per day for transplanting rice seedlings. This will better control the row spacing, plant spacing, and depth of transplanting. If we use manual labor, it would only be around 0.06 hectares per day. This machine can do the work of around 80 to 100 people. In 2020, green output in China hit a record high of 670 million tons. Despite the pandemic, green output per capita increased to 478 kilograms, far exceeding the international basic food safety line of 400 kilograms per capita. This tractor looks very ordinary, but is actually a fully automated GPS-based machine. It will increase efficiency by about 40 to 50 percent compared to normal tractors. Its operation accuracy is far better than what any human can do. Data from the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Affairs showed that the comprehensive mechanization level of crop cultivation, planting, and harvesting had grown from 57% in 2012 to over 72% in 2021. With this high-tech central control system, an administrator can manage more than 400 acres of land, even while on vacation. Be it rural traditional markets in villages or in large mega cities, what you will find in China is exactly the same. This is a very typical grocery store found all over the country. Come and follow me, I will show you what's inside. Here's some food for thought. The price of the staple grain remained almost unchanged over the past 10 years. As a result of government strong promotion of agriculture production, we have abundant of food supply. As you can see, we have so many different varieties of choices for people to choose. China has ample stockpiles of grains. Its national reserve for wheat, rice and corn can support domestic consumption for up to 13 months, far higher than the generally accepted international standard of three to six months supply for food security. So there you have it. The short summary is, there is no better place to be for food security than here in China.